Now this whole free series will be uh, very profitable because we're going to consider the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God. That will be our theme and our topic and that's going to be for a number of weeks. The knowledge of God, knowing God. And um, that's going to take us down various avenues but we want to look at it from various angles. Now, so what we'll do tonight, our format is, is that we will pray, then we will also have a little reading, we'll sing a hymn, we'll turn to God's word. Let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your word, we're thankful for the revelation that you've given us of yourself. You're the God who desires to be made known. You're the God who has revealed himself. And in you, there is no shadow at all. You are the God of light and revelation. And because of that, in all our experiences, we know tonight there is only one we can really know. And may it be that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we would be led, we would have desires, we would have longings which are to this end. And that uh, as a church and as a people, we would know in our lives uh, that greater reality and blessing and joy of what it is that we can know you, the one, the true, the living God. We do ask that everything we say will be uh, for your glory, that will be our chief and our only concern. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the book of Hosea. The book of Isaiah, turn to the Old Testament, open your book in the middle, you come to the book of Psalms, you go through the great big prophets of Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, and then Daniel. Then after that you've got Hosea. So it's Hosea chapter 4, short reading, taken from verses 1 to verses 6. So we're going to read God's word, it's the book of Hosea chapter 4. Verses 1 to 6. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break all restraint. With bloodshed upon bloodshed, therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with priest. Therefore you shall stumble in the day, the prophet also shall stumble with you in the night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priest for me, because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. That's so good. Well, if you have your Bible tonight, turn to that portion we read together. Now, our subject for the next number of weeks, even months, is going to be the subject of the knowledge of God. And there is no more important uh, subject or, or what we're taken up with as a church than this. The Lord Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed a prayer, and his prayer was this, that they may know you, He prayed that they may know eternal life and that they may know you, the the one, the true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And if you were to have a prayer that was to be prayed, your last prayer, your only prayer for your loved ones, what would that prayer be? Well, perhaps one of them, would be this you couldn't pray a better prayer that this is eternal life that they may know you the true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent and if I were to ask tonight even in a small group 
of all the things that we know and have learned and experienced and skills that we have here in this small group there would be a vast amount of knowledge that we would pool together in our experiences of life the interests that we have but if i were to ask us all together about our knowledge of god then perhaps that pool would not be as great actually when we think about it there is a lack of the knowledge of god not only in society but also in the ch church and there is a great need that we would know of god and that is our thought and we're going to begin this night by simply beginning with the thought of the need of the knowledge of god and as i said one of the problems we have in our places of worship at this time is that we are not as versed in the things of god as we ought to be and there's many reasons for that but one of the reasons and i only pick one reason is that our minds are no longer focused upon him i mean you can go to church for many reasons you can go for the social uh, for the entertainment there are many subjects that we're dealing with how to help and be good in life but the actual thought of the focus on god is not quite there but imagine for a moment uh, that uh, if people on a sunday were to come with this one thought in their minds one desire in their heart that after the morning service or the sunday i'm going to know more about god now that is going to be fantastic and you could have a, just a little savor of what the prophet jeremiah said let not the the wise man boast in his wisdom let not the strong man boast in his strength not let the rich man boast in his riches but that you boast in this that you you know god you know me the living god that's wonderful and that's why i want to turn to this uh, chapter where you got these words first of all hear the word of the lord you children of israel and there's a charge which he has now against his own people the children of israel and the charge that god has against these people is this is that um, they do not know god there's a lack of the knowledge of himself in the land and i'll just describe something of the background is that these people as you know were god's people they were the people at this time which were progressing um, materially they were prospering even politically it was the day of the up they were of the children of israel they were the 10 tribes which had uh, split off from the two tribes in the south but they were still god's people and although they were actually prospering in many areas of their lives you can read with the prophet say you're the ones who got two houses one in the mountain one by the seaside these people were in a real affluent place but he has something against them and this is the charge to the inhabitants of the land there it is in verse 1 there is no mercy or no truth or mercy or knowledge of god in the land and that actually mirrors uh, perhaps something of our own condition even in this day that god has something perhaps against and where we are as a people let me just mention these uh, uh, three things of mercy and truth and the knowledge of god and when you read what happens in verse 2 to verse 3 you find that there is a it affects every area of life it affects them morally because if you don't know god it affects them socially in their relationships the effects even listen look at that in verse 3 even nature itself and everyone who dwells will waste away where the beasts of the field the birds of the air even the fish of the sea will be taken away 
Now, how much do you hear of that even today on the news? And uh, that actually has an effect because you don't know God. Uh, of all the subjects of the environment and what we can do to help it, well, let me suggest the knowledge of God will go a long way for eradicating many of the ills which are the symptoms we find now in society. But what happens here is this is that they have lost their way. And this actually has an effect. So, for example, down in verse 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. And let's just begin there then tonight, first of all. We want now to make this our series. I want to show you the importance of this, first of all, even in the life of the church, that because there is a lack of this knowledge of God himself, then people do perish. Actually, there's one verse, you don't have to turn to it, but it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, and he says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And the interesting word there uh, for then that message, the word in Greek logos, translated in some uh, Bibles as the doctrine, the word of the cross, that if people don't know that, then people perish. I'll give you an example. Just talking to someone this morning, they had been to church uh, last Sunday, they said they had a wonderful time, it was good. we had a good speaker, I want to tell you about him. Oh, what happened? Well, he took um, Doubting Thomas, and what he said was this, you see, you know, we doubt people. We doubt people. And you know, people do a lot of good things. And if they do one thing wrong, you know, that knocks them out. And uh, we don't realise that we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't doubt people because they do something wrong. And you begin to realise that there's a lack of the knowledge and the doctrine and the message of salvation. And people, they perish. And people do perish because of the lack of knowledge. Let me give you some examples. We know that uh, in the beginning of this COVID epidemic, there was a great kind of uh, rush to try and find out how this disease operated, uh, how it mutated, what were the conditions that it travelled and passed to one another. And of course, because people didn't have the knowledge, first of all, we were all on the back foot. And because then we don't know, diseases can uh, go rampant, things happen. Many people over the years have died of uh, simple things like unclean water. And if only they knew uh, what was happening, they could have dealt with it. And knowledge is very important. And we know ourselves uh, in our own um, bodies. For example, physically. If you go to the doctor and you say something like this, I'm feeling very tired. I don't know what's wrong with me these days. Or it may be that you're 83, but never mind about that. I, you know, in your, you say something, I tell you what it is, you're lacking vital vitamins. And normally it's vitamin B and it's B12. So that's what's going to be. What you need is your body is lacking something. And then you could go to the doctors. He says, oh, you've got a problem. You're lacking uh, red blood cells. You're very weak and you're very anemic. You see, what you lack, it has a great effect. And these people, as we read here, there was a lack of the knowledge of the things of God. And let me say to you that this must be the first time in about... 1500 years that for the first time when we had to confront uh, an epidemic a plague and although we have uh, knowledge from scientists it was the first time that we as a nation perhaps for a long time didn't know what to do we didn't know there was a God you could call upon you didn't know there was someone you could hide in we didn't know, we had forgotten that there's a God, do you realise, that can keep you and protect you 
and is a God who has control over the very plagues of this world and is a God who gives knowledge to the scientists to find their cures. There's a God who works and through this world and we had forgotten and we've forgotten you see because of that people die they really do and in this uh, day and age in which we live there's one who answers prayer there's a God who intervenes in individual lives and there's a God who rules this world uh, but the lack of that knowledge you see people perish and then also obviously there is this my people are destroyed for this and how desperate this is they're destroyed they perish and it's spiritual and it's eternal and people have no idea of the way of salvation they don't know that there's one who is gracious they don't know the message of what it is that they need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and when you come to that there is a earth within this land even in places of worship I assure you when you listen to what I listen to and I shared with you there is not anything in that message that tells people they need to be saved nothing in that message which tells them there's a way of salvation forgiveness of sins eternal life with them the Heavenly Father there is no message which tells them that there is a Holy Spirit that can give new birth. And there is no way that there is a hell which could and needs to be shunned. Now, this is the lack of the knowledge of God. And because of that, people think they're fine. And there's a real need. Now, I just want you to look for a moment. And just to think of this word, knowledge. Because uh, what that actually then does mean my people are perishing because of the lack of this and let me just show you for a moment in Hosea chapter 6 you can turn to that and verse 6 it's not you see the lack of religious things or even the religious practices these people have got plenty of that in chapter 6 verse 6 you read I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than bird offerings. And what you find here is this, is that now these people were still taken up with the religious ritual that they had, doing those things which God had told them, bird offerings, uh, sacrifices were being made, a uh, praise I'm sure were being offered, religious things were being done. But when you think about it, the land is filled with this, but the, they did not know God. That was the point. And it could be, listen, in our own places of worship, we're perishing. And you say, why are we perishing? Oh, I can tell you why. You can go into a church where you've got any hip-hop records going. You go into a church where you've got high church bowing down ceremonies. But when it comes to to knowing anything about God, there's nothing. And even in our places, this word knowledge, you see, that knowledge that he speaks of, as I'll try and show you now, is very intimate. And when a church no longer knows of the presence of God, a relationship with God, that intimate experience with God, I tell you, they, they perish. They, they think that even just because they can open up the Bible, and they can talk here and there. That that's no, no. They have no idea sir, of what it is, of the knowledge of the close, intimate uh, aspects. I'll just give you a few examples of this, and uh, you, you know it. I've given them many times. Uh, Genesis chapter four, the verse one, and the word which is used there. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Now, that word could not uh, be more intimate in what it is speaking. It's not speaking of just, uh, it's speaking of people coming together, it's speaking of those which are brought together by God, 
those now which know themselves in a in the closest possible way. That that's the word which is used in a relationship with him. I'll give you another verse. It comes from the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel and chapter 3. And here it is, the possibility to show you very clearly that it is possible that you can dwell and you can even live within the very tabernacle of God. The presence of God is dwelt. You can actually sleep there, not move from the place and still not know God. Verse 6, what happens is that it wasn't great days, but Samuel was there. He was a young boy. And Samuel, and then verse 6, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. So there's Samuel in the tabernacle. Putting out the lights, whatever he's going to do. Doing his jobs. Being here from a young boy. But when God comes and calls, it says quite clearly, he did not know the Lord. Because the voice of the Lord had not yet been, or the word of the Lord, had not yet been revealed to him. And it's the lack of that knowledge which happens in places of worship that they don't know the word of God and the voice of God which calls them and you could go to chapels and churches dying and they are perishing. Now what's interesting if in our text tonight if you look at it uh, further on uh, the reason that this is the case and this is interesting because you've rejected knowledge there's a reason because not that they did not have the knowledge, no, they lacked it, and it was because of this. Not that God had not given it to them, but that they rejected God. Let me just spell it out in a number of ways, how we can come to a place as a people, look, as a nation, first of all. Romans chapter 1, and it tells us, though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God and they became futile in their vain imaginations. And what happens is, is that there's the knowledge of God, which is, look, I'll be honest with you, manifest, right? And you need to mark that word down. The knowledge of God is being manifest. I love that word. You know why? Because it's telling us something of the way that God communicates. It's been proclaimed. It's been made known. It's not like you've got to deduce it in some kind of way. It shouts at you uh, as you walk in this world. And although we can see his wisdom and his power and even something of his Godhead, we have suppressed the truth in ungodliness. And when that takes place, you see, you're rejecting the knowledge and the light that you have. When people say, well, Chris, what's going to happen? To all those people who have never heard of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me assure you. There is light which has been given. Light which they have known. And men choose darkness rather than light. And there is also, you see, a, a knowledge in this way. And this is these people. Think of it. They rejected it. Here are the people who have known, we're told... They were given the oracles of God. These are the ones which had the written word of the law. These are the ones who knew of great prophets which were sent to them. And those northern tribes had loads of them, of the prophets. And here's one of them, Hosea himself, speaking to these people. These are the people, when you think about it, just imagine what they had in the whole cycle of their lives. They had known of festivals, of the Passover. They had known of the Pentecost and the, the festivals of, of wheat. They knew the festivals of tabernacle. I'm just saying that. So every year, 
They would know of the stories of being brought out of uh, Egypt. They would know also of what it was of being in the wilderness for 40 years. They would know of the land and the goodness. Now what these people have done is that they rejected that. Now that's where we are today. No, no, just think of where we are as a nation. There were those things, I know we don't follow a church calendar, but when people no longer know that Christmas uh, is to speak something of the incarnation of God, let's do away with that. Let's just scrap that. We may still have a winter holiday, but we'll, we'll scrap. And when it comes to Easter, let's just knock that on the head. And it's no longer Whitson holidays. We remember the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You say, what's all that about? I tell you what it is. It's a rejection of the knowledge that you did have of the deeds which God had done in this world. And before we point the finger, this happens in our own lives, in the life of the church. This is what happens in the life of the church. It's a rejection, I assure you, of the Word of God, the teaching of God, the knowledge of God. How does that happen? Well, you only have to look these days. Let's rip out every pulpit that we've got. You say, what's that? No, we don't want a place where someone is going to come and preach to us the things of God. I tell you, we'd rather have a more sharing experience. Well, you know, that may be good. And then you see what happens. I tell you what we'll do. We'll scrap that. I'll make it a stage. I'll put the band in. Oh, that's good. And what we're going to do, we're going to sing. And if we could only sing the word of God, it would have been something. But no, we're going to scrap every hymn that's got any reference to the Bible. But I'm going to sing about rivers and sunsets and water and light. I'm going to do all that. And we're going to scrap it. And then when you go in and you say, in the people of God, let's not even bother with having things like Bible studies and teaching and learning. That's not what we're into. We're into a, a community church and the rest of it. Now you say, what's it? It's a rejection of the knowledge of God. And uh, it happens. And this is where these people are. And look at the consequences of that in verse 6. And it's an interesting consequence because it's uh, worth noting. I also will reject you from being priest for me. Now with that, God is going to do something and how we need it as a church. And I'm going to encourage you tonight that in your life and in your experience, that the one thing that we want and to know is more about him. More about Jesus, would I know? More of his saving love to show. More of his saving fullness. More of his love for you and me. And the point being is this. I will reject you from being priests. And when you become a Christian, actually we do believe in a priesthood in this church. It just happens to be the priesthood of all believers. All believers. Every one of us has been made priests and kings unto God but he's got to charge hear the word of the Lord I've got to, I've got to, he's got something against his people and when you see these chapels and churches which are closing now last year 30 Baptist chapels closed in Wales and those are the ones already reported some haven't bothered phoning in and saying we're not opening and when you think that's one denomination, I can show you there's the Presbyterians, there's the Congregationalists, there's the Anglicans. We would have lost more than a hundred churches in one year. And you say, what's that? I'll tell you what it is. There was no understanding of God in these places. They rejected the knowledge of him. They didn't want to know that way. of He said, I will reject you as priests. And we have a great uh, compulsion upon us that we would then know something of him to gain a greater understanding. Because of this, nations perish. Because of this, churches close. And there could not be anything more and greater. No matter how old we are, no matter how long we've been in the Christian life, 
we need to know more of him. What I'm going to say tonight, just something now to consider. And what this then would mean for us. In this call that we've got. Well, to be honest here, the first would be that it would be a repentance. God's got something against us. And um, you, there are many things that you may think that he's got against you. Something about one's life or yeah, those. God doesn't normally deal, does he, with symptoms. He deals with the actual problem. And of all the things that we could have wrong is the fact that we just don't know what we ought to know. That's just a fact. And there is a need in our lives to understand that and to acknowledge that perhaps we need to learn more of him, know more of the things of him. Uh, we need in our lives to come and uh, read and listen and we need to know that look in our experience that we need to receive and learn every day something more about God listen God is infinite God is beautiful God is great God it is something to learn about the very being of God and I'm just going to give you a, a few things that we, we need to do. We need to repent and say, well, to be honest with you, because this is the kind of thing we're going to become a Christian and there's been no growth and there's going to be a real need for that in knowledge. Talk to you about the dangers of knowledge and then also to pursue him, to pursue him and to learn more of him. Now, remember what I just said in this sense. Um... Knowledge is not just that which is on the head, but is of an intimate experience with him. So, for example, is that it's like when two people come together, where your husband and wife, and after a while it should be that the one will understand the other. You will grow in a greater knowledge of the things that they like and the things that they dislike. And when he comes here, you can learn something tonight. I hope you do. That perhaps you never thought of it. God has something against his people because they don't know yeah. as they ought to know. He's not, he doesn't like that. He really doesn't like it. And you get then to have a sense of the things which you know that God does like. And then you've got to think that he does not like. And then you begin to know him better in that experience, in a more intimate way. You know of that communion with him and that you will learn. Uh, let me just consider this. Just a few things that you need to learn. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. Now isn't that interesting? You Just to give you those two, truth and mercy. Uh, there are some which like the Lord of Truth, but they're not very merciful. There are others which are very merciful and they've got no type of truth. No, neither will do. He's got something against his people because there's no truth and mercy. And you realise that that's something which is important unto him. He wants you to grow in one's life and in one's experience. And look, don't go to a place where you want to reject uh, learning more about him. That's a bad place to be in one's Christian experience. Now what we need as a church, I'm just going to give this to you, is that as a church, if we think of what's the need in our community, in our land, then surely this would be one. That we would be a church that would know God. Yeah. Now I understand that knowledge can puff up. But no, it's a nightmare. The more you know, the more our heads can be filled. But that doesn't take place with the true knowledge of God. With the true knowledge of God, your head won't be puffed up. 
You'd be humbled. You'd be humbled. And it wouldn't be a problem. But it is a great need that we've got. Because uh, for the well-being, for the future, uh, for the blessing, for that which pleases God, that in all the disciplines that we can have, and we need to do our good works, we need to be part of a body, there is a place where we need to learn and we need to come and know him better because of this. If we don't, people will perish. Mm -hmm. Perish.